So very good day to everybody. This is uh, electromagnetic fields. We are going into the practical session, and in today's class, we'll discuss about the microwave attenuator, and we'll discuss about the microwave coaxial and waveguide attenuator. So this is especially for you, my dear students and young researchers, and you can reach me at dr.krishnan at the rate of gmail.com. So before beginning the session, once again, I'd be thank God for giving me this opportunity to deliver this useful session to share my knowledge among my. fellow national international participants students and young researchers so in this class we'll discuss about the microwave attenuator applications what are the types fixed type as well as variable type waveguide attenuator then we'll discuss about the rf attenuator radio frequency attenuator then we'll discuss about microwave coaxial and waveguide attenuator okay so we'll understand what are the manufacturers of the waveguide attenuator okay then we'll uh, uh, discuss about the types of the waveguide attenuator okay uh, we'll understand the sources and of course the causes of the attenuation then finally we'll end this class with the cross talk attenuation okay so at regular intervals i'll be giving you some short videos to discuss the knowledge in our topics right so attenuator it's not an active element it's a passive element that is going to control the amount of the microwave power which is transferred okay from one point to another in the microwave transmission line so you have like two options whatever power is coming if you want to attenuate either you try to reflect the energy or you try to consume that energy okay so that is actually absorb the energy in some dissipated elements so this absorption is actually done okay so there are attenuators which are available in the microwave region either you can call it to be fixed type or maybe it's variable type fixed means device will be giving fixed attenuation okay and variable means the attenuation can be changed which means that you can change as many decibel of attenuation that you have to change so that you can change means it is variable attenuation that it produces fixed attenuation means it is fixed type okay so suppose let us take in the case you have a signal source which has 20 volt thing but you see that the signal that the time you need to connect to the oscilloscope okay like uh, cathode ray cathode ray oscilloscope and oscilloscopes are they cannot handle 20 volt signal so you need to have an attenuator between them okay so that your signal will come to maybe 5 volt or something that the oscilloscope can handle that particular specification okay so we'll have the types of microwave attenuator fixed type coaxial line waveguide precision type okay so these are the types of the microwave attenuator first one coaxial line okay so in coaxial line we place one lossy material in the form of a you know, thin resistive film okay in the center of the conductor so by using this lossy material whatever microwave power is flowing some energy would be absorbed by this uh, lossy material as i told you there is some absorption okay so that will be providing you know a fixed attenuation to that incoming signal so attenuation is nothing but the loss which we use the lossy material like maybe aqua dock sand okay so that is the absorption or the attenuation okay so as it is fixed it will be providing you know fixed amount of attenuation okay so then we'll have fixed type waveguide attenuator so here we will be having a dielectric strip that is coated with a resistive film so it is placed in the center of the waveguide parallel to the maximum value of e okay so the strip is parallel to the electric field intensity then it can absorb the minimum amount of the incoming signal so maybe if it is perpendicular means that will be absorbing the required attenuation so when the electric field is going to pass through that film okay that will be having current okay so the induced current on this resistive film due to this incident wave will be resulting on the power dissipation maybe in the form of the heat okay which is nothing but the attenuation of the microwave energy so this is the uh, fixed type waveguide attenuator which we are talking about in the diagram okay so then we will have variable type waveguide so as the name implies it can be changed okay so there are two types of variable type waveguide attenuator okay so we will discuss about waveguide attenuator okay so here we use flap attenuator which maybe it can be resistive 
or maybe it can be a lossy material in the flap. So if you try to set this flap, okay, so that we can produce some attenuation, okay. So based on the depth of the insertion, okay, we can produce the attenuation. So here the lossy material will be absorbing the energy that is coming from the incoming signal. So here we'll be having a knob. You can adjust the type of the attenuation. In decibel, you can change. Okay. Then you'll have variable type attenuator. So variable, you'll use a micrometer. Okay, so that is attached with a resistor film, which is placed inside the waveguide. So if you try to adjust this micrometer, we can insert the resistor material and you can control the attenuation of the signal. Okay. Then you have precision type variable attenuator. So precision means we'll have a circular section consisting of very thin tapered resistive card on both the sides. Okay. Then you'll have a radio frequency attenuator. Okay. So it is going to take an incoming signal that is going to weaken and reduce the power of that signal by some factor. Okay. Given a purely resistive impedance at the input and maybe output impedance at the input and output are usually the same. Okay. So these resistors, you can use it for dissipating sufficient power so that they will not burn out when the relatively high power input is applied from left to right. Okay. So we assume that input is on the left and maybe output is on the right. Okay. So, but ideal attenuator pad should be reversible. Okay. Input right, output left. Okay. So that you will be interchanging the input and as well as output and get the same result because we are using a symmetric structure. So the resistors must not have any reactants. So they have to be generally a, a carbon composition, high voltage resistors. So that is a very good example of a unbalanced attenuator pad so that you will use it whenever you want to drive a high voltage linear amplifier for ham radio purposes. But definitely this amplifier requires you know, very few watts of input, maybe 5 or maybe 10, okay, that will, you know, make to drive the output as high, maybe like 100 watts, okay. So, our concern is that should, we should actually reduce that uh, 100 watts, okay, a 50 ohm non-reactive, purely resistive impedance. So, you want to reduce that 100 watts or maybe a few watts that you have to make it so as to uh, you know make the functioning of the linear amplifiers much more better we design in such a way that uh, you know we accept about like 100 watts and maybe we often require about 100 watts of input so you need not have a uh, attenuator pad for such the linear amplifier because they are fed with the coaxial cables okay so that either it can be a single ended or maybe an unbalanced transmission line and everything will be ha having a characteristic impedance in the ham radio which will be having like a 50 or maybe like 52, 52, 52. Okay. So in this case, we'll be having a balanced attenuator pad. Okay. So that will be used for a variety of applications. Okay. So maybe you can use it at the input of the receiver. Okay of a sensitive receiver to sense that particular signal so you can you can use it as the output of the transmatch in order to reduce the power for some reason okay so that is the reason you use the balance attenuator pad okay so to uh, make operating in this condition and you can change you can convert into a unbalanced attenuator just by grounding one end so balance you can change to unbalanced by grounding one end Okay, so you have to make sure both the terminals are connected to ground. Only that you have to see. And you, if you change it once again to unbalanced, then you will be able to operate it very easily. Okay, so in other words, you have to, uh, you have a short out fat resistor and then ground it, provided both the terminals are connected, okay, to ground. Then you get a circuit where you choose the values of the resistor so that you get the desired input as well as output impedance such that the impedance will have no reactance. If it is ha having no reactance components, uh, reactance we are talking about X, X factor. Okay. So that it will be made to operate easily. So the resistors cannot have any reactance uh, and of course alternators do not perform properly when input or output or maybe any of the resistors will be containing the reactance with resistors. So you should uh, not want to use you know wire wound resistors okay and finding a high part carbon composition resistor would be a tedious task.
okay so sometimes maybe you will use this low power attenuator in the receiver circuit okay so if you have a very high power station nearby okay and you need to reduce the power okay so it does not you know define the receiver across all of the spectrum of the reception criteria okay but uh, it's better that more than you know overloading your receiver with all other components you can choose to use the low power attenuator so then we'll discuss about microwave coaxial and waveguide attenuator okay so these are once again passive devices here you're going to control power levels in the microwave system by absorption of the signal so attenuator which attenuates the radio frequency signal in the waveguide system you can call it as a waveguide attenuator okay so this is the difference okay so there are two types fixed type variable type so they are attached i mean they are what you enjoy the characteristics they are achieved by the insertion of the resistive films okay so we'll have this coaxial line based uh, fixed type of uh, attenuator okay so here the resistive film okay the resistive film is fixed at the center co conductor which is going to absorb the power and as a result of power loss we get the microwave signal to be attenuated okay so this one you can call this the coaxial line attenuator so this is the lossy material okay so it is actually a fixed type attenuator so here we have waveguide waveguide means variable type attenuator okay so it's a variable type okay so here the thin dielectric slip in the center okay with the coated resistor film is placed in the center of the waveguide so here the film is placed in this waveguide parallel to the electric field okay so here in the variable type the resistor van is moved from one side of the wall to that particular center by using some screw okay so here the electric field is considered to be maximum so that is the reason we say it as maximum electric field okay so here the resistor film is actually shaped in order to give the linear attenuation variation so here are the manufacturers of, of the waveguide attenuators okay so uh, generally if you see the characteristics it will be having low power okay uh, high power okay fixed type variable type for several frequencies so attenuation if you see attenuation range ranges from 0 to 40 decibel or maybe more okay so the manufacturers will be manufacturing waveguide switch waveguide adapter and several waveguide components okay so here are the manufacturers you should know that okay waveguide solution limited it's in uk okay flan microwave limited advanced technical materials militech inc elmica which is in lithuania okay cernex okay right we'll have key side technologies vector telecom pivotone communication technologies luzo electronics microwave communication laboratories micro lab that's a wireless telecom group company ventec microwave corporation Zeissen Technology Co. Limited, RF Com Limited, and Anna Systems and Solutions. So these are like waveguide attenuator manufacturers. You should know that. So depending on the fixed type, variable type, variable type, high power or low power, you'll be using this one. Okay. So we are actually talking about the types. Okay. Low power fixed attenuator. Okay. So this is this one. Low power fixed precision attenuator. Okay. Then continuously variable attenuator high power fixed precision attenuator so we have different types you can use it okay according to the range of the frequencies so first of all fixed low power attenuator so here the signal loss is actually constant and you cannot change it okay then fixed low power precision attenuator okay so signal loss is fixed and high precision elements are being used okay then fix it high power precision attenuator so here precision elements will be having you know the electrical performance at high power okay so based on the mode of operation you should be using then continuously variable attenuator so cva continuously variable attenuator here the signal loss can be changed using the mechanical adjustment screw or maybe knob or maybe dial okay so that you will be able to adjust it. so when light is going to travel along the fiber okay so there will be a loss of optical power what you call it as attenuation so attenuation represents reduction in the amplitude of the signal okay so the attenuation of the optical fiber 
measures the amount of light which is actually lost between input and output end of the fiber. So in optical fiber, the attenuation is mainly caused by absorption losses and scattering losses. Okay, right. So we'll discuss about this one. Okay, so the attenuation of the fiber depends on the material from which it is fabricated, the entire manufacturing process, and of course, refractive index. Okay, so attenuation, you know, it is measured in decibel. So with regards to the distance, it will be decibel per kilometer. So these are the sources of attenuation, absorption loss, scattering loss, bending loss, core cladding loss. Okay, you know that core cladding, okay, core cladding, dispersion, mode coupling and pulse broadening. Okay. Right. So the rate at which the light is actually absorbed is dependent on the wavelength of the light and of course the characteristics of, about the particular glass you are using. Okay. Then signal attenuation. So it is reduction of the signal strength during the signal transmission. So that it will look like the you know the waveform. Okay, so the farther the waveform gives, you know, weaker it becomes. So that be becomes you know the amplitude of the waveform becomes smaller, 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 and the generation is actually represented and of course disabled. Okay. So uh, these are the causes of attenuation. Okay. For example, the cable is very long. Okay, wire size, crosstalk, okay, defective collectors or maybe conductors. So that uh, makes the causes of the signal attenuation. So these are the four causes uh, of attenuation long cable for both wired as well as wireless transmission. Okay, so the signal is actually weakened if it is transmitted to a long distance. Okay, so the signal amplitude gets smaller, smaller, smaller. That will make the attenuation, you know, big size. Okay, so that is the problem. So wire size will be having an effect on the uh, attenuation. So wire can have more attenuation than the thicker wire. Okay, so um, that can be, you know, easily disturbed by this external interferences. And thicker wire can make more, you know, secure, more safe signal transmission. Okay. So that's the thing. Thick wire, thin wire. Thick wire, more secure. Okay. So thin wire, definitely it will be having the attenuation causes. Okay. Crosstalk attenuation can be caused by crosstalk from the adjacent wire. So crosstalk, you can call it as a electromagnetic interference from another uh, I mean transmission wire. For example, when you are talking, immediately you will have a crosstalk. Okay. Somebody is else talking. Okay. So that occurs when two into this twisted pass are running in the parallel way.